You wanted more biological mysteries? So be it, let's do it. Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 biological mysteries that can't be explained. Part three, 30 more. 30 more, no, 10 more. 30 in total, quick maths, let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, Alzheimer's. Roughly 500,000 new cases of Alzheimer's are diagnosed each year. Whenever we hear about somebody developing it, more often than not, they're older, right? We often make jokes if someone forgets something like, oh, but you're getting older, Alzheimer's are kicking in. It's, you know, it's common at this point, but we still don't know why or where it comes from. Alzheimer's is an irreversible degeneration of the brain that causes disruptions in memory, personality, cognition. Every three seconds in the world, somebody develops dementia. Annual healthcare spending adds thousands if you're suffering from Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, and more than 16 million Americans are providing unpaid care for somebody with Alzheimer's right now. It's the fifth leading cause of death for those 65 and older. There's early onset and late onset Alzheimer's. There's two categories. There's no cure for either. Scientists are still trying to figure out what causes the disease, but so far, a leading theory is that Alzheimer's is caused by a pileup of these proteins called amyloids, which harm the brain. This is a theory, but medicine that clears amyloids from the brain aren't doing the trick. Hopefully in a future video, we break down the cure to Alzheimer's, but until until then, Alzheimer's remains a biological mystery, hence why we're here. Number nine, but why? And then I talk about holes right after. We'll try and lighten up the mood here just a little bit. Here's a fun fact, scientists aren't sure why we have an anus, a butt, the whole he, we're so obsessed with them in pop culture and we don't even know why we have them. Yeah, next time Sir Mix-a-Lot sings about liking big butts, somebody pull him aside and just ask him why, you know? Be like, Mr. Mix, why do you like big butts? Why can't you lie about them? Catherine Rue, science writer from The Atlantic, explains more of this biological mystery in their study titled, The Body's Most Embarrassing Organ is an Evolutionary Marvel. Great title, couldn't have nailed it more. Before the anus came around town, animals would eat and excrete through the same way. They would just, mm, and then spit it out. Then all of a sudden, butts come into the mix, the sir mix a lot, and now animals can become bigger, stronger, and stinkier. We still have no idea which creature had the first anus. That's a sick title, I want that. I really want that. The first guy with a hole. It's like, look at this dude, look at this little caterpillar. Little I haven't asked, dude. Catherine Wu explains in that report, which I highly recommend that you read for yourself, of course I did after reading that title. She said it's hard to study something that must be millions of years old and also doesn't fossilize. Yeah, there's no bones in your butt. That'd be, that'd be weird, it's a big old hard butt. I've talked about butts too much. Let's just put this behind us, you know? Leave it in the rear. Put it up our, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of puns. Let's move on. Number eight, Ebola's origins. I know we're all a little preoccupied with some other stuff right now, but here's another fun mystery to add to that list. Ebola, we're at the point now with Ebola that that we're treating monkeys. We're out of the woods for the most part, panic-wise, but scientists are still trying to figure out where this thing even came from in the first place. The first known case of Ebola occurred in 1976 in Sudan in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Over 600 people got sick and now come 2005, we're trying to find its origins. More than a thousand animals in Central Africa were tested. We tested 679 bats, 222 birds, 129 small vertebrates, and the only animal found with Ebola was bats. Specifically, three types of fruit bat. It's still unclear whether bats are reservoirs for the virus or if this was a bat infection that also affected people. Hence the mystery. We're still trying to figure that out, believe me. Number seven, the appendix. It's been around for quite some time, that's for sure, but are we even sure why we have an appendix anymore? This organ causes a lot of discomfort. More often than not, you'll have it removed and it's now a standard procedure. It's so common, but why is removing an organ from your body common? Why are we just like, oh, you're doing that thing? Great, I've heard about that. That's your time. No, this is weird. We're taking a thing out of our body, like, and then stitching it, ugh. Well, what scientists do know about this whole process is that our plant-eating ancestors for sure needed it. They needed an appendix for digestion, but cut to us, we still have it because we're at that point in evolution in the middle where we don't need it anymore. That's the leading theory here. But another theory that's more recent is that we have two types of bacteria in our colon. A lot of ass talk in this one. The nasty type causes infections and harms tissues and all that bad stuff, but other types of bacteria are good, as odd as that sounds. It doesn't harm the colon, and when the subject takes antibiotics, they get rid of bacteria in the colon. The appendix job is to store good bacteria when the colon is being flushed out. That way, the good stuff can still stay in control. Still mysterious, but the brilliant scientists at the University of Arizona are getting to the bottom of it. I had one more pun. I waited for this one. 
There we go, now I'm done, I swear. Number six, blushing. Okay, picture this, you're standing near your locker, it's high school, Blake rolls up on some Heelys, does a cool hockey stop, everybody looks over, he puts his longboard to the side, pulls out flowers, and Roller Blake is now asking you to prom. You immediately start to blush, right? You're feeling all that hot panicky, your face gets hot. This is a sign of embarrassment, or you're happy, or you're confused. Uh, what is blushing, and why is it so damn obvious all the time? Let's talk about it. The origins of blushing, and whether or not humans started doing it to maximize personal gain, is the true mystery here. Charles Darwin was scratching his head over this. Why do humans call their own bluff when they lie? but animals don't. One leading theory is that humans did it to submit authority, but over time, as our social interactions changed and became more complex, blushing was a behavioral trait that represented guilt or embarrassment. Scientists have noted that women blush more than men, and we think it's because women would usually show their honesty to men by blushing, right? We're looking at this in a reproductive, animalistic way. They would blush so that they can produce an offspring. That's like the OG origins, but the other stuff we still don't know about. Hence the mystery, hence this list. Number five, lying. Okay, I think it's time to admit that we all lie. Just a little. Kanye West lies in jail part two. We all liars. So good. Robert Feldman, University of Massachusetts psychologist, he words it really well. He says when it comes to white lies, we're trying not so much to impress other people, but rather to maintain a view of ourselves that is consistent with the way that they would like us to be. Which is a great way of saying, I just lied to you. I'm gonna start using that one next time I bail on my friends and they get mad. I'm just gonna be like, look guys, I want it to come, but I needed to uphold the way that you view me as the guy who always bails last minute. Just gotta keep it going or else who am I, right? If I didn't bail, then I'm a liar. It's like, what's, what's your really, what's your true agenda? We don't know exactly why we lie, but it starts when we're young. Children start lying at the age of four to six. Now this, weirdly, is a good thing. This means that they're learning. Humans lie to avoid hurting themselves or to avoid getting in trouble, but it's not always primal. Sometimes we lie to make others feel better. That's the mystery. Of course that turtleneck looks good on you. Number four, dark thoughts. Okay, we'll get a little darker for this one. We've been a little silly, now we'll get back to the Hmm, vibe. But humans, thinking about what happens to them after they die, despite how it feels, it's a normal thought. We read books about dreaming and we try and piece together every little thing that we remember, but like I talked about in part one, dreaming is also still a mystery here as well. The brain is fascinating and we're at least a little curious what happens to it after we die. From time to time, humans think of their own death. You'd be lying there at night and you're like, oh, if I was in a hospital right now, who would who would come see me? It's like, is it, is it weird? Is it bad? Is it a bad sign? No, it's, it's pretty normal. Pellin Casabir, scientist and psychologist at the Center of Healthy Minds at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, believes that thinking about your own inevitable death causes anxiety for some, but others think about dying as immense clarity and wisdom. I've heard it's exactly like before you were born. If that's the case, sign me up, because I don't remember paying for my phone before then. You know what I mean? No bills before that. Just darkness, a lot of sleep, no food, and no bills. Good time. The mystery here is why we so commonly daydream of our own death. That's the what I'm really talking about here. Do you think animals had that same thought? Or are they too focused on eating and surviving to daydream who would show up at their funeral? Humans are strange. Number three, hair. To be specific, we're talking about hair you know, down in the southern, southern regions. The southern regions, the southern, southern, south, hair down, pubic hair, we're talking about pubic hair. Pubic hair is a biological mystery, and yes, even after we hit puberty, we still can't figure it out. Of course, we have many theories, but no definitive answers. So far, we believe this is a part of our evolutionary history, and it comes from a time where humans needed fur all over their bodies. Robin Weiss at the University College London made a pretty remarkable observation. At some point, our pubic hair became thicker than the rest of our hair hair in our body. That's the mystery here. Our best guess is protection against cold or to protect the genitals during intercourse or to prevent chafing from running around and doing parkour and all that stuff. All the normal stuff. Pubic hair, still a mystery. Number two, the basking shark. Pubic hair and sharks, we got it all. Okay, on part one of this list, I went in on hammerhead sharks. A bit too hard, I'll admit, with the, with the goofy eyes. I'm doing it again, I called them goofy, sorry. If you're a hammerhead shark, my bad. So on part three, I have to shine the light on another shark, the basking shark. The basking shark translates to large nose sea monster, and honestly, yep, pretty much nailed it. They swim through the surface of waters and search for tiny little food, plankton to be specific. Despite how big their mouths are, yeah, they eat plankton. They're just like, ah, and they eat dust, it's crazy. We'll go years without seeing one of these guys, but once we do, we're in luck, because more often than not, basking sharks travel in large numbers, found in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. As of 2019, basking sharks were considered endangered. Overfishing, of course, is to blame for that one. The biological mystery here, and this one is not her giant mouth, of course, but the fact that the basking shark females only have one functioning ovary, and it's the same every time. It's always the right one. Mystery. 
Yeah, the big mouth part is not the mystery you thought, eh? You really thought I was gonna say. No, that's normal, that's just, that's just shark stuff. Hashtag just sharky things. And finally, number one, blood types. A, B, A, B, and O, those are the four main blood groups. Each can be RHD positive and each can be RHD negative. So there's actually eight groups in total. O positive is the most common, while AB negative is the most rare. If you're AB negative, congratulations, you're rare and your blood is rare. Now I'm starting to sound like a vampire. When donating blood or receiving it, you need to know which type of blood you need, of course. It's important that you know which type of blood that you need. Different types fight off different infections. Now scientists believe this began around 20 million years ago. Just like the appendix, this mystery kicked off long before us. We don't really know why blood types change among us. And the reason that we're A positive or B negative, like many things in the series, is a biological mystery. Dr. Mohammed Mubayed of Prometica Hematology and Oncology Associates explains on thehealthy.com that natural selection would provide unique blood types to beat specific infections. So if you're ever wondering why our blood type is different even in your family with the same genes, well, get in line. Lots of scientists are still trying to figure this one out. Thank you so much for joining us on Most Amazing Top 10. Those were 10 more biological mysteries that cannot be explained. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Comment down below if you want even more, and then I'll go scratch my head for a bit and then return. You're the best. Have a safe week. See ya. So pale, so pale back in the office. Here we are. Hi. Happy Friday. Do it. I'm gonna do this in one clean thing. No cutting today. I was gonna make so many jokes where I'm like, I forget, but I'm like, this is a serious one. Every three seconds, somebody in the world develops dementia. Develops. Number nine. <laughs> so stupid. Right after Alzheimer's. What the? F Before the anus came around, <sighs> I'm yelling about a bowl off too much. Out of breath. I'm ranting too much. Uh, 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 as somebody who constantly bails. <gasps> Big breath there.